So let's create a new action for crouching and assign it to left control. If you watched uh, previous videos in this series, you know that we have a main player CS file with all of our main logic like movement, gravity, and so on. And we also have separate files for individual features like sprinting or jumping. Crouching is going to be no exception, so let's create a new script file called player crouching and put it on our player game object. Now for crouching, we're going to be modifying controller's height. So let's create a new property in our player class called height. And here we're just getting and setting controller's height, nothing fancy. Our crouching script is going to require our player script. It doesn't make sense without it. It's not going to work on its own. Also, we're going to be pulling action values in this script. So let's add uh, the input system namespace. And also let's grab references to our player script, uh, the player input component, and our crouch input action. Now for crouching, we're going to be setting the player's height to some new value. So let's make a new serialized float called crouch height for that. And let's also add a new private float standing height to hold the initial uncrouched height. On start, we're going to set it to player height. On enable, we're going to register for the on before move event. And on disable, we're going to unregister from it. Here, we're going to check if the player is trying to crouch by reading the crouch action value. And if the player is trying to crouch, we're going to set the height target to crouch height. Otherwise, we're going to set it to standing height. And then we're going to assign it to player height. As you can see, when we're crouching, the camera ends up outside of the character controller collider. Because the collider resizes while the camera offset from the center remains the same. To fix that, let's go to our player script and make the camera transform public. If you click on the camera, you'll see that it has some offset on the y-axis. To calculate the correct camera position while crouching, we need to take this initial offset and subtract half of the distance between standing height and crouched height from it. So let's make a private vector3 variable to hold this initial offset and set it on start like so. On before move we're gonna calculate the half height difference like so and we're gonna subtract it from the initial camera position to get our new camera position. And then we're gonna set it as the camera's local position. And now as you can see the camera correctly offsets and stays inside of the collider. Now to add a smooth transition between the two states, let's add a new variable called current height. On start, let's set it to player height. And let's add a new serialized float for the crouch transition speed. On before move, let's calculate crouch delta by multiplying the transition speed by the time delta time. And we're going to slowly interpolate current height to the height target by crouch delta. And now we just need to use this current height variable instead of the height target in all of the calculations. And now as you can see crouching is nice and smooth, but uncrouching however is not. Luckily it's easy to fix by just decreasing the skin width in the character controller component. And now it seems like it's working pretty well. However, if you try to uncrouch under a low ceiling, you'll see that it's just not working. The collider is trying to expand, but there is nowhere for it to go. So it just bugs out and behaves unpredictably. What we need to do is we need to cast a ray up and see if there is a ceiling and only uncrouch if there is no ceiling on top. Now we'll only do the ray cast if we are trying to stand up. And to actually detect if we are trying to stand up, we first need to detect if we are crouching. We're going to make a property called is crouching, And it's going to return true if the difference between the standing height and current height is more than some small value. I'm hard coding it here just to make things simpler for us. In our on before move method, we're going to check if we are crouching when we are not trying to crouch. And if that's the case, it means that we're trying to get up. And if that's the case, we're going to cast a ray 20 centimeters up and we're going to cast it from the top of the player controller capsule. And if it hits something, we're going to calculate the distance to the ceiling and we're going to set the height target to the current height plus distance to the ceiling minus some small margin. What it means is that we'll try to uncrouch to the ceiling, but no further. And with the math max method, we're making sure that the height target is never smaller than the crouch height. You can test it and see that it's all working pretty well. And it will uncrouch the player automatically when there is no ceiling anymore. Now, one thing that I want to point out is that this code here will execute each frame regardless of whether or not the height target and the current height are the same or not. It will do all of that even if we are not trying to crouch or uncrouch. We can check if the height target and the current height are approximately the same, and if they are, we're not gonna do all of that. 
And the last thing that we're gonna fix is the movement speed. Right now our movement speed when crouched is the same as our regular movement speed. Luckily it's gonna be pretty easy to fix because in the sprinting video we've already added the movement speed multiplier that we can easily modify. Let's add a new field called crouch speed multiplier. And on before move, we just need to check if we are crouching. And if we are, we can multiply the player movement speed multiplier by our crouch speed multiplier. And now we're moving twice as slow when crouching.